you know all this. Um, if you've been here before, you've seen how I start the work. Metal stylus, ballpoint, go over the entire thing, put the indent in the wood, you go to the end of it, you trace it all in, and your pattern is transferred. So I use the shaft chisels. Most of the time I use this skew chisel. All these tools are available from bearwoodsupply.com. The shaft chisels in particular are great, especially for beginners, because they're so well-priced and they have a great variety. Additionally, I may end up using the Marathon Micromotor. It's a rotary tool that has a really great uh, switch in, switch out changing of tools. Fantastic. Also using the cuts all bits in case I need to auger out a bunch of material. Basically, I have done a little bit of prelim work and that is to take the outside of your subject matter and to cut it down. At this point, we can just jump in with chisels for the most part. In this particular case, we're just after this subject matter right here in the middle. This is a three quarter inch block, so I have some room to work with. So let's look at our depths. So we have the background, then we have these leaves. We have the first bell, we have the second bell, and then we have these berries in the center. I'm gonna start with cutting these bells in and then cutting them away. And it can just be a basic movement. I start by putting the bottom of the skew down into the wood, lifting the top so that I can get the cut and also move and steer and see what I'm trying to cut. We'll now just uh, get one of our gouges. It's got an end on it. The sweep here is rounded. So I'm just going to use that rounded edge to give myself a basic cut around that leaf. We could just cut the bell, the top of the bell, but as soon as we do that, we're gonna eat, meet up with the sides of this leaf and the side of this bell. So it will be easier for us to cut this leaf in a bit, just to give ourselves a bit of room. Cutting against the grain. We're gonna reuse the skew to get a bit of a slightly deeper area here. And we're gonna cut the skew in here to get down into that trough that we cut in earlier. We know that from the artwork, this bell here goes behind this bell. So we're going to go ahead and cut in some chisel into here to free up this area. Alternatively, you could use a rotary tool and that would help a lot in creating depth. We know that we have to take this depth, at least here, down much farther, at least to the base of these berries. So we can go in with a bit and take out just that. This is a cuts all very coarse um, burr, and I'm just gonna use it to go into this section here and this section here to just create a deeper hole so that we can get to work quicker. So now we can see that I have some good depth in here. And now I can just go ahead and cut off that flat point there. You'll see me hold my chisels in a couple different ways. The most important thing to take away from how I hold my chisels is I use a method of the dominant and non-dominant hand method. The dominant hand, my, my right in this case, is going to hold it for power and thrust. And my non-dominant hand, my left, is going to put it on the chisel, sometimes a hand, a finger or a thumb. It's really just to guide and steer. So now what I'm doing is you can see that I've dropped down to the base of the berry section. And now I'm just kind of tapering it from that point up towards the top of the belt. Now this belt will definitely drop lower. We know that it's behind this one, but right now we're just going to get a basic taper in there, get the idea of lower here, higher here. We're also creating some room for us to work on this belt. Get a wider chisel. This is one of Chef's fishtail gouges and it's uh, just got a wider corner to corner for me to pull off material. The real advantage of a fishtail gouge is its corners, how they flare out to either side, um, matching the sweep that it is. All right, so now we have a little bit of depth created. Let's go ahead and at least drop this section. When you're working with something like this, um, it's a little easier to get your artwork back on. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to continue bringing the stop cut right here a bit lower because we know that this depth is now even with that top cut. And we need it to be more 
so we have a place to work. Just cutting this bell's roundness to define it in my mind, like that. Okay. Likely I'm going to take most of this top off here, or at least half the distance that we have there off. But I want to define this bell in my mind, so I did that. So now we're going to use our gouge to cut this bell portion in here. The method. I use to hold the chisel is for my safety. There's a lot of pressure and a lot of power going into the tool when I do it this way. And this hand is keeping me safe. Here's a smaller gouge just to get that area in there. Now that we've cut this area in here, we have a basic understanding of what can be removed here. And one of the things to remember is we're going to cut a lot of this off, this whole section here, leaving this alone. But once we get to close to the finished depth for this bell, the bottom of this bell going around the sides, we're going to want to round it in. This bell is not flat. And you can make it look pretty good with very little rounding. And this doesn't have to be perfect. You're not really aiming for perfect. That will happen with detail. So you're really just defining this area and dropping the bell down in these sections. Okay. Again, some of this is detail, but we do want to try to keep them separate so it's easier for our mind's eye to recognize that there are four leaves here and that's what we're going for. Now, the height of this bell and the height of this bell on the block are exactly the same. On the drawing, we can clearly recognize that this bell is in front and this one's in back. So what we would like to do at this point is to take this bell here and drop its height at least a little bit. And this height here will drop quite a bit once we fully complete the bottom and side portions of this bell. So don't worry about the height of this. The only height of this bell that you need to be concerned about is about right here. Now, both of these bells, as they head towards their sides, go away. They drop, they round. So they're going to drop down here and here. The same goes for this bell here and here. So let's just clean this trough right here so that we can see what we're going to be cutting into and how much actual depth we have. <sighs> and now let's start to form this bell. We know that we can just hack off pretty much part of the sides here and just try to round, round, round. And we try to mold it together super low here not so much here less here and then it's kind of straightening and we'll do the same on this side and i'm just removing material round that a bit I'm turning the chisel in my hand as I pull forward. Basically, we have this artwork that shows the highest point of this bell approximately here. So we want to make this one high, maybe even, maybe even here. But this basic area here, you want it to be high and it will go away this way and go away this way. So we're going to try to leave those areas high as we carve. So it's basically like this. So we can round it. Okay, so let's look at these guys here. We have a very clear understanding. We can see this berry. 
in its entirety. So we can see the berry in its entirety. It's on top. Uh, the next berry that we can see is this one. So we're just cutting them out. And then finally this one. So now what we can do is we can tuck the third berry underneath both of these two. And drop its overall height. And then the next one here, the second berry, drop its overall height. And we want to maintain three separate berries. And berries around. So we're going to tuck in all these edges. And again, we're not really after detail, just kind of trying to get it in place. This will drop a bit, we know that. All right, so let me tell you what I think will happen at this point. So we've defined the leaves in their four parts. We've defined their basic depths, and we've denoted that uh, this is lowest these two are the same height, more or less, and this one is on top, but there are four separate pieces. We have two bells, and we've defined this one by uh, cutting down to the base of these berries, as we did with all the leaves, and this one, for the most part. You know that this leaf kind of impinges on the placement of this bell in this area, because we can see this bell's side and the leaf, but not really any of the bell behind. So. We have this kind of just unknown area here. This one here, this bell, we know that it kind of heads in and then comes back out and then it actually heads up here. So we know that it in fact meets up with the berries and we can cut that in to make sure that we remember that. The bell is the most important part right here to define. So we can cut that a bit right now. This is uh, certainly detailed, but it's also kind of defining the shapes that you're working with. We did the leaves, we did the berries, we did both the bells. We pushed the background back. By pushing the background back, it gave us a block of wood to work with. Without pushing that background back, there's no work, unless, of course, you want to just dig into the block with everything there. If you do that, you're in for a lot of work. So it's better to remove material and leave you something to work on. So we did that. And now what we need to do is just basically define the bells, this one in addition to this one, to bring it more depth for one to shape it as well. And then we would of course need to start defining the side of the bell. Okay, so you can see how that start to do that. All right, so I think we're at an end for today, guys. On Sunday, I'll do this again on Instagram, and we'll continue right from here.